welcome to UniWeb. This is a tutorial website for material science practicals. Where in this videos, in this series of videos, let's say, we'll be solving each and every practical that is there in your syllabus today. And I suppose this would be very helpful for your test. Uh, let me start off with the first experiment: is the measurement of dielectric constant. This is a very simple and easy experiment. For this, you need the most important is a dielectric cell sample. Without this, you won't be able to do anything. So make sure you get this at the first. Now, first, we're gonna measure the dielectric constant, but before we do, make sure you have the setup ready too, because without the setup, there ain't gonna be no experiment. This is a capacitance meter. That is, it's gonna measure the capacitance of your uh, dielectric sample and different temperatures. Here we have apparatus temperature me measurement box, and we have a temperature sensing device that will give you a digital form of temperature. That means you can measure the temperature at consecutive uh, intervals, and then you can take the capacitance reading. At the end, you're gonna plot a graph for this experiment, and then you're gonna st study the nature as far as the temperature goes. So, first what I'm gonna do is put this dot inside here. There you go. The dot is placed nicely. Now we're going to tighten this thing, well, close the box, we need to close the box because we don't want the heat to go out. Now let's start with the switching on all the apparatus. Okay, now as you can see, my initial temperature reading is 48, right? Let's start with 48, let's take the measurement at first for 48. Uh, you want to be setting it up to, yes, you're going to be setting it into 20 nano farad. The measurement should be 20 nanofarad because when I keep it at two, 200 uh, picofarad, what happens? My reading was one. That means the output that I was getting was not enough in this device to soar. So you gotta me make sure that you put the device in an optimum status that you can see the output. That is 20 nanofarad. All right. So let's start off with the experiment. Now what, what I'm gonna do in this experiment is I'm gonna measure the temperature reading from this box and the capacitance, the consecutive capacitance from this box, right? And in order to increase the temperature, I'm gonna regulate this box over here, the switches over here, I'm gonna regulate the switches. What this switches would do is, it's gonna increase the electric field inside this box. In turn, increasing the temperature, that is voltage increased, it will, uh, directly proportionally, it will increase the temperature inside the box, right? So let me put it up to 100. Okay, I'm putting that up to 100. Now, as you can see, the temperature was is increased from 48 to 49. So this will be a quite slow process. So you might be have, wanting to have some patience while doing this. All right, for 49, uh, for, so let's say for 50 degrees Celsius, I have a temperature. Uh, I have a capacitance reading of 2.36. 2.36 as shown over here. Right now. As we know, anything, any apparatus always has error, so as this. So as soon as you move this, this value might change. So make sure your uh, apparatus is as still as possible. All right, so the temperature is increasing. We're gonna take the temperature for five consecutive, uh, for five different, still 95 degrees Celsius in order to plot the graph in an optimum measure. So let's wait for this to get 55, then I'm gonna show you the calculations. Right, just one more temperature, one more degrees, and we'll be right there to measure our experiment. So, come on. 55 degrees Celsius. Now, for 55 degrees Celsius, my capacitance reading is 2.41. 2.41. So, in this way, you're going to be measuring for each consecutive. That means the next reading would be 50, 60 degrees Celsius, 65, and leading up to at least till 95. If you take it till 100, it's even better. Your graph will be even better than you know, uh, taking for less value. All right. Now let's drop down to the calculation part. I'm gonna close the apparatus. I hope you understand it. Now, in order to measure the calculation, we need to draw the table first, as shown in your book over here. I'm gonna just copy the sample from the book. So we have temperature reading. 
degrees Celsius, capacitance reading in farad, and dielectric constant, which we want to measure. The dielectric constant, E0 will be equal to C by C0. Your first priority is to fill up this data table first. That means in my reading, I got for 50 degrees Celsius, I had a capacitance reading of 2.36. 2.36 for 55 degrees Celsius, I had a capacitance reading of 2.41. So if you're doing this in a fair manner, I'll show you what will be your end result. Okay, now if you're doing it, see my friend here started from 30 degrees Celsius, so from consecutive 30 to 90, for every five interval, he took the capacitance of a ring in Farad, right? So this will be your end table regarding from where you're starting at the first. So my friend here started from the first. If you don't understand the handwriting, uh, please excuse for that. All right. So this is my temperature. Uh, this is my reading for each and every temperature, and the con uh, and the respective capacitance uh, in my reading from our capacitive uh, device over here. So. After filling up this table, what you want to do is you want to be measuring the value of C0, right? The capacitance C0 is equal to epsilon naught in D. Now, for the given dielectric sample, uh, I want to take it out, but I'm pretty sure it's very hot inside there and I don't want my hands to get hurt. So, for this given uh, capacitance dielectric sample, the value of resistance is one, uh, sorry, uh, radius of the sample is one centimeter and the uh, thickness D is. 1.83, I suppose, it's 1.83 millimeter, and the value of epsilon naught, which is always a constant, its value is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12. Into 10 to the power minus 12. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the value of uh, C naught. To measure the value of C naught, make sure you have each and every reading in SI based system. All right, that means no centimeter, no millimeter. We're gonna only be having meters and meters everywhere. So first, I need epsilon naught, 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 times area. Now I have a radius. I need to calculate the area. What I do? Pi d square by r square. Sorry, pi into 1 into 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the raised minus 2 because we have a centimeter over here. Whole square divided by 1.83 times 10 to the power minus 3 because of the millimeter over here, right? You calculate this value. If you calculate this value, this value will be shown as 1.51 into 1.51 into 10 to the power minus 12 minus 12 farad. Now, this is your C0 value. That is, for this dielectric sample, the C0 value will always be constant. Now, in order to fill this half of the table, Sorry. In order to fill this half of the table, what you're going to do, you're going to divide this value with C0 each and every time. Divide the value with C0 each and every time. And for all the uh, results that you have taken, you're going to divide this caps, uh, capacitance value with C0 and measure the epsilon naught value. All right. After getting this table, what you're going to do, you're going to draw a graph. One of the most tedious things to do, draw a graph. They make it sound so cool sometimes, but still you got to draw a graph. In x axis, there is a temperature reading, and y axis, there'll be a dielectric constant. That is the epsilon naught value that you calculated. When you draw the graph, uh, in ideal situation, or in, if your experiment is 100% correct and the apparatus is adjoined correctly, your sample, your results would be like this. Mostly, your results would be in this way. But it's not always the case. When you do the experiment, there are a lot of factors to be covered and there are a lot of uh, situations that you should be seeing. So your graph may be any way desired. For example, my friend over here, his graph, let me show you. My friend over here, this, his graph is a straight line. Now, as far as my experience goes, I've seen this graph in a couple of experiments. So even if you don't get this graph over here, it does not really matter. But as you can see, the trend is kind of increasing. There is the graph started from the low point and the graph is increasing over here. So as over here, right? So in order to be getting this value, that means you should be doing more sample data, right? Which in our experiment is kind of waste of time sometimes and which you don't want to do because it's kind of tedious and boring. So let's switch, let's add it up to this. So this was a video of a dielectric constant 
measurement. We had a dielectric sample placed inside this box over here, which measured the inner temperature, and the temperature was controlled using this over here, which has a voltage reading. This voltage reading increases the temperature over here and makes sure you keep the lead closed so as the heat won't escape into the atmosphere and, uh, and you won't be having a lot of time measuring over here. This is a capacitance uh, meter. We put the capacitance into 20 nano, 2N, just remember 2N if you don't want the standard reading, just put it in 2N, this is the standard reading over here. And in the end, we have our temperature box where we measure the temperature, right? If you don't even know the names of the uh, names of devices, it does not matter, you just be knowing how to use it throughout the experiment. Thank you.